course not. Hope that wasn't your move. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Building Repertoires Using Chessable. In this series, I take brand new openings that I've never played before, and I'm learning them for the first time ever using Chessable courses specific to each one. So I'm working through the courses, and after you see me play these openings in my Blitz games during the series, I'll cross-reference them with the Chessable course to make sure I'm playing the right way and making sure I'm learning and, and improving for next time. So I hope you guys really enjoy the series, and I hope it gives you an insight into how to study and improve at chess. So I've been playing three minute games, we're at 1600. I'm just gonna jump right in. Okay, D4. Knight C3, okay, we got a pre-mover here. After G6, I'm trying to remember if we still go for this. I actually think we just played this. Because after that, can't white play d6? I don't think we play any positions like that. Do we? So I'm I'm just gonna go e4 here. I'm not sure if I actually remember it right, but let's just do this. Something now we for sure transpose, but I'm still curious whether that was right. Okay, knight c6. No bishop e3 without h3. How much we understand. Okay, I just know you never let <laughs> never let b5 happen. So let's go here. Play d5. Play a5 here. Wow. Okay. He goes c6. So I almost want to take this with the pawn, because then I think he'll play queen takes, you know? <laughs> Let me make the worst move. So that, that's like, what is b6? Crazy move. You know, bishop takes, better move, but play your odds at that point. What the hell is Buddy thinking? He's probably going to lose his queen or something. So I don't know what was up with that one. Let's move this knight. Maybe to a5. A knight here, we can definitely take it. I think for the moment, I'll just do this though. Knight a5 with b7 is a bit of a threat. Okay, a high energy move. I can take the knight first, um, but even taking here, I don't think is super dangerous. Let's take this. He'll get rid of a couple pawns in front of our king, but I'm hopeful that um, you know that's kind of all the damage. Knight here, so. Queen's coming out there. Let's maybe attack this knight. Bring our queen out here. Should get rid of most of the problems in the position. Because if he gets triple pawns here, I mean, to say goodbye to your winning chances. There will not be a there will not be another threat made in that position. I could take the pawn. I mean, I'm probably supposed to take it. I really want to leave the pawns tripled. <laughs> But I'll go here and move our king. 
definitely in the business of trading pieces. So. Stay on a light square. Could give a check and trade rook, but rook c8, we can play b3 anyway. Let's get one trade in. King off the g file. And I think b3 solidifies the knight. And then finally, we can move this other knight. Let's go ahead and do that. And then we just don't have anything to worry about. Knight's protected, pawn's protected. Let's get this knight in. We'll challenge this as well. d6 is hanging. Offering a trade that I know that he pretty much can't, can't do. <laughs> And if he doesn't trade, queen c3, I think, is really going to be painful here. f6 will take, or bishop g7 will take with a queen. Or checkmate. gg after g6. Okay, so it is e4. I mean, he doesn't say much about these lines, but let's remember. We haven't seen exactly knight c6, so let's have a look. Let's have a look. Usually with these like d6, g6 lines, it's kind of whatever, but e5 seems like an important inclusion, so let's learn it. I don't think we've seen exactly that before. Or we have, and I keep failing to play the right move. Either way, it's good to review. Black wants to prepare e5, so it's critical to play d5 and kick the knight away. There you go. I let him play e5, and I was not liking the position after that, honestly. Something felt wrong about it. So we play d5. Knight b4, I don't know how is a move. Yeah, it's hard to say what the knight is doing on b4. Exactly my thoughts. White just plays bishop g5, and that move doesn't make a lot of sense. Knight e5, we take. Bishop c4, queen e2, and push the pawn. Relatively uncommon move in the database. The main idea is to prevent black from playing e6. All right. d4, knight f6, c4. Hold my pawn. You were talking about a proper Budapest. Here we go. We still haven't found it yet. <laughs> Okay, bishop d2. So if knight d2, we play c6. If bishop d2, I believe we hit him with a5. I think. Okay, queen. D2. I mean, knight a6, pretty much the only move that, that looks normal here. We have knight here, queen takes knight a6, and the queen surprisingly lacks squares there. But I'm not sure it's enough to... Not sure that's enough to actually play. So yeah, let's just guard, guard the uh, guard the pawn. Could also go queen e seven, but I think the knight wants to go to uh, to this square. So I'm not sure that I'm. I don't think I'm upset about this. Maybe this and this. Hmm. Hmm. Let's try this. Hey, Adriana. Oof. Look at that. The raids in. Big host here on kick. Go, Adriana. 
I appreciate that a lot. Knight f3? That would be nice. That would be a move for me. I will enjoy the stream a little bit more now. I'm doing a series where I learn brand new openings that I've never played before on Chessable. And I started a new account. And I've been only playing those, uh, only playing those particular openings. We're seeing if we can rank up using, uh, using that strategy. I'll take that. Thank you very much. Thank you kindly. Don't blink. Knight D3 is around the corner. Ugh. He he actually facilitated it. He wanted to lose like that. <laughs> Ouch. All right, we got the white pieces. D4, knight, c3. Is our opponent going to clear? No, c5, which we have not seen almost at all. We'll play d5. E6, e4. E6, E4, same thing. If E6, we'll take it. G6. I'm not sure if we've looked at anything here other than this. Um, I feel like... I feel like it's this sort of stuff. Can't remember if we play h3 or not. I personally would play h3, but I can't remember what's in the course. I'm just going to play this. Castle, castle. And if bishop g4, I'll play knight d2. a6, we play a4. And I think this knight wants to reach the c4 square. Whoa. It's a... Well, I won't sugarcoat it. It's a bad move. <laughs> E5 definitely tempting, but I'm going to refrain and stick to uh, chartered territory. Stick to the same plan, knight, maybe knight d2. C4 is the intention. Queen e2 deals with that for now. Knight b6 renews the threat. I also have a knight b5 move I can do. Whoa! Now, I know it looks tempting to take, but I actually think I don't want to take this. As crazy as that sounds, let's try to get our knights to these beautiful squares. A6 is always impossible. Knight h5, we can play g3, just to make sure the knight doesn't pop in there. Knight b6, king h2. And this square is covered. Also, f5, if we take it, they can't really take back because of the knight. I have to admit, I didn't really see that move, so shout out to WTF52. I actually think, in a weird way, this is something that I miss more times than I don't, more times than I catch it, because it's a way to create a battery, but you don't actually move the bishop, so it's one of the weirdest ones in chess. Like queen d7 with a bishop on c8, or I guess you could have queen e7 this way, but it just doesn't work like that. It's usually like this, or queen on d2 here. So, I mean, this is just a really good move. g4 allows knight in there, so we're probably going to take, uh, I guess, technically the safer choice and go queen here. 
Because what he might do is he might go back. Yeah, so he's going to keep the queen on the board. Now when I go here, is he going to go back? Now at least I have another option, queen, uh, queen g2, so that I don't have to make a draw, for example. But we would have offered him a pawn there, and then I would have followed up with, you know, something like knight b5, and maybe I just win it back immediately. So definitely a nasty, nasty move to miss, but hopefully it's not the worst thing that happens to us. Okay, well, we're going to take, just because he can't take back that way, um, which is a good thing for us. We need to get developed, but our knight is at least going to have some options here. Bishop takes, takes, rook takes. We have to move our queen, but the knight pops into the e4 square directly after. I think we're probably okay here. And then, yeah, once I get knight e4, I'm feeling a little bit better. There's g4, but that's not really, that's not really what we're thinking. I need the knight here <laughs> badly. Just opens the bishop, guards the weak squares. Rook here, uh, for sure. I need to develop. Let's play this. It's a small tempo. A queen here, knight there isn't really doing it. Let's bring this over here. I think queen for two rooks would be pretty, pretty good here. Let's bring this bishop back. Okay, it takes though. I don't think this works. Very high energy though. You have my respect. You have my respect. Okay, we're definitely uh, <laughs> we're definitely in sacrifice territory. Luckily, we're up so much material that I don't think any of this will uh, matter too much. We're able to trade off the queens, which is the biggest problem with the position. And as long as we put things on light squares, we should be okay. okay great game, WTF. Love that move, queen d7 from him. Really, uh, really tricky move. I think he probably... Could have cashed in his uh, extra, well, not extra, his pawn that he was reclaiming there. Don't really hate his decision not to, right? He created a position where he was going for the attack, and he did all that from a pretty damn bad opening. So it's even actually more impressive. C5. So D6, E4, G6, Knight F3, Bishop G7. Okay, so this is actually what we got. I think bishop g4. I'm not sure where bishop e2 knight here came from. I think maybe a different line. I don't know. Maybe I just made it up. But let's have a look. Because bishop c4, that doesn't look like something that we played. So let's learn this one. Because we played bishop e2, not bishop c4. Okay, castles, a6, a4, always. Okay, so this makes enough sense. I assume we'll look at bishop g4 now, absolutely. So if knight e5, I'd love to know where we put the queen, but it looks like g3. c4. Hey, this is quite nearly like our first, I think it's literally our first c4 game. Okay, g3. So we go c6, d5. And the goal, I think, is to play d4. So e3, 
Not going to stop us. D4. 92. So after D3, we can already force the king to move. But even though we can do that, I actually don't think we should. I know it doesn't make a lot of sense, but if I do this and the king moves, I don't think white's actually that disturbed. Meanwhile, me, I can barely, I can't develop because so my queen's in the way and my pawn is actually hanging. So I, I actually don't think that's that good. So this isn't going to make a lot of sense, but I'm about to just play a normal developing move. Unless I can think of something else. Ah, maybe we can go here and not give the check. That's, that's reasonable. Don't give the check. So I'll go here. I don't want to discoordinate myself. So I'll go here and then I'll move my bishop. I'll wait to give the check and then I'll be castling quickly. I will sack a pawn to put the king here, but I won't do it and have my queen there. That, I can't deal with that. Queen a4 is irrelevant. And f4. Um, so the pawn is also hit here. I think bishop c5 puts us on the best diagonal. I might lose this pawn. That's definitely something I have to live with, but I'd like to castle very quickly. And this is the point. Even though there's castle, castle, I don't think it's necessary. Takes, takes, knight g4 and queen b6. I at least have to consider, but no, it doesn't work. So yeah, let's give this check. Maybe I can even play bishop f5 and hang on to this for just another... <laughs> Not worth it. Take my pawn. I'll save my bishop. Your king's not that safe. So I'm hoping that this will be pretty good compensation. I think being castled is worth something here. Obviously, we do not want to allow this trade. Not at all. Okay. We got rook e8 coming next. I picked this square because there's no square the knight can move to bother the queen. Queen d7 would have been silly in view of that, in my opinion. Um, and queen d8, I felt like I wanted to make sure I wasn't just undeveloping. So let's make sure to attack the queen. Now knight g4, I think, can be met pretty nicely by d4, sadly. So let's play first this move to stop and discourage the move d4 and develop. This is for sure one of my next moves, if not knight e4. So one of these will be very strong, I think. This pawn is very tough to defend. Okay, queen here. Yeah, these, these moves are looking good. <laughs> very good. Also, knight d4. And knight d4 looks pretty damn good, too. too. Just realized queen takes is super hard to defend that, uh, that square. Okay, but these are the these are the tempi we live for. So a move like this, there might be good things here, but I'm not even I'm just gonna like take the take the tempo move while I can. I'm just gonna play this. Seems to be a very decent looking move. Let's take. We have a checkmate here that, well, he's going to go ahead and miss. Got him. We caught him looking. 1648, and we are approaching 1650. Decenti. Maybe our opponent is decent at chess. Okay. Takes. All right. Queen f6. 
C3. Okay, already not a move we've seen. But I can say that queen f6 seems to have the idea of bishop g4, so that's exactly the move I'm going to go for. Makes sense to me. Just like this. I feel like just take it. Takes. Yeah, why not? Takes, takes, takes. I can't go knight e4. That's one thing. But if I castle, both pawns are loose. So let's take here. Okay, this is what we want. If he takes back, we have a bind. The pawns are going to be on dark squares. So this is thumbs up for us. Let's go knight here. And we'll just long castle. This rook will come to e8. Maybe we'll go c5. Knight here, knight before, I think. Oh, we're so close to picking up a pawn there. But what I'll do instead, I'll just go c5. If you want to take me, go ahead. And I think we have a choice here. Um, rook takes e5 feels normal, but it allows b4. I'm not sure we're getting that pawn back. Let's go here. It does not allow f4. We want to take. So the bishop is going to come here naturally. Now, bishop here, I'm forking the pawns. And yes, after rook here, you can survive just for a brief moment. But you're not going to keep those pawns forever after I double rooks. Okay, pawn there. Let's go here. This pawn's under attack, so we'll play e5. Now I can also take on b2. So we actually ended up winning both of the pawns, and this should be domination. Go h6. there okay. go g5 he doesn't have this move anymore so i think his position is getting worse and worse let's just play this small move to add some support here double up i think this one we're just going to leave it and continue to expand over here Oh, wow. <laughs> F3, that was... <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, I was like, tunnel vision. Okay, A5, B4, C3. Guy played F3. The funny thing was, by playing C4, I actually got the mate. Because if I checked him first, he would go Bishop H2, and then g4, and the rook would defend. But because I played this move, he actually played bishop e1. Now it's actually mate. So had I played it first, I wouldn't have actually been rewarded with the mate. Another mate well executed by Amon goddamn Hamilton. All right, we have to check this one. We know it's in the course. E4, E5, Bishop B5, takes, takes, um, castles, Queen F6. We know for a fact it's in the course. It's not in the course. This move must suck. <laughs> C3. Well, I can tell you that I played the best move, that's for sure. Yeah, bishop g4. I mean, it's just, it's such a weird move because there's no knight d2 to support. Like, I don't know. Something about this is just really unfortunate. So d4, this is what he did. Takes, takes. We should have maybe just taken on f3. I thought this was slightly clever, but 
computer move queen g3 holy smokes wow so what should we have done takes takes and castle looks like 97 and castle are almost interchangeable e4 knight c3 what line are we gonna get Huh. Knight c6. We see this move a lot. We see this move a lot too. Bishop f5. I remember we were looking at some e4 stuff. I might bust it out maybe against a high rated opponent, but for now, I think we'll keep a calm, cool, collected with just e3. So let's go here and take with the C pawn. Let's try to play this way, the way we're familiar with. Okay, he's going to copy me even here. I'm not sure that you can. I'm not sure that you can. You may have seen the copycat speed run. And I think it might be leading you astray, which makes sense for that particular court. <laughs> so we're going to take here. You're going to take there. I respect you immensely. Now, if I take here, <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> you can't, you can't keep doing it forever, my guy. We'll play knight e2 after queen f6, and then knight f3, c3. It was a good double attack, my friend, but I got a double defense. And you might be asking, why am I using this knight and not that knight? To be quite honest with you, I think this knight belongs on f3, and I don't think that knight belongs on c3. So I want to go g3, c3, and then everything is defended beautifully. We could go g3. I also think queen d2 is a nice developing move. Okay, I don't think this one's playable just because d5 is loose. So there's no chance to get that e5 move in, and we're going to castle next. And then we can pop our own knight into e5. We're not really going to be in any trouble here. Okay, queen f5. I think, uh, I think it's time. Queen here, I suppose, could be played. Not really going to be doing much. Same with queen here. Knight g5 is always possible. Um, queen g4. Kind of like queen e3 here. This is still not quite possible. King g2. Is there a trick after king g2? I'm looking for it. I'm trying to find it. i got to be honest with you. I don't see it. So if I don't see it, I'm just going to play this move. It looks suspicious. But I think I just play h3 next. Yeah. Get off my property. Okay, c3 will be really important. Guards the center, finally. It stops knight there. Let's play queen e3. Just to watch everything. We have such a rock-solid pawn structure, but you always have to watch out for these potential sacrifices.
Okay, so let's see how this one plays out. I'm going to take. Okay, I'm going to take. Okay, I'm going to take. Okay, well, <laughs> that was it. That was the sack. Not the scariest. Let's hop our knight into the e6 square. f5 always supports the knight, so not terribly worried about um, getting pinned here. Because, like I said, f5, queen d5. I assume he'll just keep taking pawns. Let's do this. Knight g5. Bad things might happen. Maybe we can hit him with knight g5 sauce. Takes back? No. Of course not. Hope that wasn't your move. <laughs> and he lets it happen too. What a good guy. Okay. Here comes d4. Bishop f4, bishop f5, e3, e6. Now, f3 is actually not the move here. We don't have time for this. So this is the one where we play bishop d3. a6, interesting. So stopping knight b5. I'm wondering if we want any kind of h4 here. Like, is this the one with h4? Because knight f3 is not that. Ugh, no, it's not h4. It is knight f3. Pretty sure. I don't feel that that's the correct move. We play this. But no, just play what should definitely be the best. Ooh, can't be doing that. G5, no, 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 sir, no, sir. What are you smoking? Okay. I suppose treating the queens like this is probably the probably the smartest here. King up d2. Not going to allow the knight in here. Um, we're basically going to play to win this knight. Here. Knight c8, rook b8, and that's probably just as good as winning the knight, getting a trade.
Some people just really want to play. Some people just really want to play. EG. So bishop d3, takes, takes, a6 was the move. So yeah, we've only looked at two lines, which is why I was like, I don't really remember. Yeah, so I did this, then we saw knight h5, yeah, so not in there, not in there. I mean, knight f3 can't be a bad move. Queen b3 immediately, queen c8, so it likes queen b3 straight away, interesting. The openings are working today. Oh, e5, go, oh, hey, look, remember this? It's the knight f3, d6, takes pre-move, guy. I mean, it's not the same guy, but it's the same type of guy. We're going to let him get time to pre-move it. <laughs> We're going to play this move quickly, which he's not going to like. And now, and now we're going to attack the bishop. Oh, man. It's, it's, not, it's not what the boys are trying to play. Oh, oh, my goodness. You see how depressing it is when you play these for these tricks? If the opponent doesn't actually play into them. Oh, oh. Knight takes, have to move the king. They're playing it for me to take the knight and then to uncork bishop takes f2. But it's a, it's a disease playing this. Now, if knight takes d6 is much stronger, but we're going to play this. We're going to play this move. Queen takes d6. Simply because it gets the queens traded. And you, you know me, I live for that. Two extra pawns. Can't be a problem. Just can't. Buddy has got a whole heap and heck of a lot of nothing. Could throw that check in, but I'm going to keep it. This check might be useful for me one day in the future. Oh, wait a minute. You didn't tell me you were offering more trades. Well, goddamn. Why didn't you say so? Didn't realize we were uh, in the market for trades. More trades? Maybe this one first. Hard to say. This one gets the most trades. Trying to be the most solid, the most annoying guy possible.
Is that a trade? <laughs> Getting me excited. There isn't Tash. Sorry. Name it. All right, we'll go for a pawn push here. We're going to play against the knight. GG. This is what I mean. Like, a lot of people play this. Uh, this is a worse habit than the England, right? Because it's one thing to play this, but Bishop C5, this is the... I mean, try this in Hyperbola or something. This is the most degenerative trap to try to play for. E5. Bishop C4. Okay, so Knight F6. Don't see this move too often. Don't see this move ever. <laughs> That's a fact. How do we want to play against this? Hmm. 1700. 1700. Interesting, interesting. This one is uh, is fine. Probably do this. I guess this movie is playable, so this is probably the smarter move. Okay, probably going to take his bishop here. I can always grab this, so I guess I'm not in a particular rush. Do it right away. Let's take. Push uh, because I think I want to play d5. Stake some claim to the center. I feel like this knight is quite poorly placed on a4. Let's go here. Okay. I guess the best move is probably just to move the king. Sneaky little move there. KG move, queen g3. Might be a d5 move happening. I feel like we can deal with it with knight d7. Or sorry, d4 move happening. I feel like we can deal with it with that. Here we'll be taking. I 
definitely expected that one. Not expect C4. This is an interesting move. A weird one, but kind of undermines the pawns a little bit. And I don't know, it's a bit forcing, so we'll try it. Here, and yeah, we'll definitely take this way. This is the whole point. Now the resulting pawns are just a total mess. And we have an outside A pawn, so. Feels pretty nice. I think, I don't know, it's just an easier life taking that. It's an easier life. I'm going to do this to try to get my H pawn up there for, you guessed it, all sorts of fun. That's why I played H5. Oh, my opponent has uh, no idea what I'm threatening here. That's why it helps to know your mating patterns, folks. Because had he, uh, had he been aware of the pattern, at least, he could have done something to stop it. But he just had no clue. Had no clue what was coming. H5, H4. Killer. And just make sure you don't pre-move it, of course. Rook A1, right? <laughs> of course. Hmm. So knight here, he's going to stop the mate. But now he can't move his knight. Knight here, <laughs> knight d1, rook c1, knight f2, rook e1. It's like, let me get on the other side of you. <laughs> and then, then you'll be trapped again. Good game. Good game. All right, d4, knight f6. And the Budapest. And once again, we have a pre-move, g3. <laughs> What are the odds? Everybody pre-moves. They play these two moves, and then they just like, whip the next move out like it doesn't matter. He doesn't even take it back. Unbelievable. I'm playing c5. I don't care. I'm hanging on to that pawn. I'm playing c5. Oh, buddy, you deserve to lose. You're the one. Giving me pawns in the opening, pre-moving. Get that garbage out of here. Get that garbage out of here. You're pre-moving that one too. You're probably going to play queen takes. Oh, get him out of here. Oh, stop it. Stop it. We'll play here anticipating this. Wow. Unfortunately, he played the best possible move. I was going to kill him death by pre-moves. I assumed he was going to go here. But he actually played hands down the best possible move against my move. Now he's back to genius status. But hang on, how do we get the upper hand against him again? Now, I would say he's up. I would say he's up. He's got the mental advantage. Now, which pre-move is he going to do? Actually, maybe he'll stop pre-moving. If he's a real one, he'll make a prediction here. I don't think he will. I think he's all of a sudden going to start playing normally. But the thing is, he's not, he really shouldn't play normally because then I'm still up material. So I think we're going to play the move b6. Oh, he's typing to us. Oh, he says he's falling asleep. Or I mean, well, he's spamming emotes. So he's hitting us with the sleepy emote. Yes, he did play normally. 
We're going to save our knights by offering a greater prize, the rook, <laughs> which she was not interested in. Not one bit. All right, we've made some offers. We've done our best. I think we need to take this. We want to generate the, the threats with the diagonal. Yeah, we can take this. And take this just to show them that we saw that. Oof, now this is gonna hurt. That is gonna hurt. We have checkmate in one, of course, we're not gonna play it. We're gonna play this move and let him know that we can play this move whenever we want. Mm hmm. We can still meet you, but we're not going to. We are the domination squad here. We decide when this game ends. We decide. Oh, you're blundering mate, buddy. You're blundering mate. <laughs> oh, he took what a chat. <laughs> ah. And we forced him. We, for we finally forced Rook D1. <laughs> he knew that the king checkmate was about to happen. Just maximum suffering. But anyone who plays like this deserves it. What kind of trash was this? But he was pre-moving like, oh, what the hell is G3? I'm upset. I'm upset because I haven't gotten to play a Budapest Gambit. I haven't. Every single person pre-moves some terrible move on move three. What is with this? Why can't I get a regular game? It's okay, you wanna play like that? Great, C5, I'm keeping the extra pawn. You wanna play knight takes? Give me that knight. You made it to the end of yet another episode. I hope that this was really informative, letting you guys know how to study chess, how to improve at it, and how to use Chessable as a tool to help do so. At the end of the day, I think it's one of the best ways that you can learn openings. And I think that this series is a pretty good example of that. So if you liked those courses that I was working through, or if you wanted to pick up uh, different ones more specific to your repertoire, make sure to use chessable.com forward slash chess bra if you're going to upgrade to a pro membership. That's all for me, and we'll see you in the next episode.